What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's gonna be a short video today, but I wanted to get something out because it's been a minute since I've actually had a decent video out. Today we're gonna to be doing a one-liner, uh, kind of showing you how I select colors in Wayland. And from there we're going to, yeah, see where that takes us. So for right now, let's have a little bit of an explanation as to what I'm doing. I have actually created a second system on my laptop. I have two drives on there. I have my main system that you guys have already seen a bunch of times. Um, it's got all the different window managers and compositors on it. It's got, you know, all my setup, my videos and stuff from before, yada, yada, yada. That is the system that I have been running for quite some time now. I partitioned my second drive on my laptop and I reinstalled Void there and I have installed one compositor. It is a Wayland compositor because I have heard Wayland is better on laptop batteries. We're going to see if that's true. Um, and so I've installed one compositor. I'm going to try and declutter a little, little bit. I still want to check out other ones, but that might be kind of in a different realm, maybe VMs, maybe um, different laptop. I don't know yet, but anyway, I've decided to go with one compositor. It is not Hyperland, so it is not Nuri. It is not Sway. I have decided to go with DWL. Now, DWL is cool because it's a DWM clone, and I love DWM. Um, I love the patching aspect. I love the ability to do all that. Uh, DWM has worked the best for me with OBS, and so far, DWL has proven the same. Um, I would have gone with Nuri um, because I love the scrolling layout. I love the infinite workspaces. That is a massive selling point for me. The only problem I have with Nuri is the fact that the global key bindings don't work and I can't get scratch pads working. So if any of you guys out there have any tips on how to get scratch pads working and global key bindings on Nuri, I'm all ears. I would love to check it out. I'm not doing Hyperland because everybody and their brother does Hyperland. No offense to you guys if you use it and love it awesome. Continue to use it. Continue to love it. It's just not for me. I got to put stuff out that's a little bit different because if I'm doing the same type of videos as everybody else using the same system as everybody else, not going to get many views. So I wanted to be a little bit different, but I still wanted to check out this Wayland world everybody is in love with and see if it's actually worth all of the I'm not even going to say all the work. It really wasn't bad setting this up. Um, it's really pretty slick. There are just some hiccups here and there that I run into. Um, like you might notice when I switch scenes here, it's going to take a while. It's going to go to a black screen before it switches to my next scene. And that's a little bit annoying. So I got to figure out what's going on there. Um, and then there's a couple other little things. But um, so far, it's working well. So one of the things that uh, Wayland has also proven to be a little bit difficult is actually... Uh, sorry, I'm getting messages here, is actually having uh, a color picker. Now you have like, um, what is it, G color 2, G color 3, all that stuff for Xorg. You've got multiple different options for choosing a color picker in Xorg. Wayland isn't quite the same. Uh, you do have hyper picker, but again, that's a hyper tool. I'm trying to steer clear of anything hyper right now. Again, no offense to you guys, no offense to the program, no offense to the, uh, you know, to the developer, any of that stuff. I don't have any issues with it. I just don't want to use it. Um, it's too inundated right now. It's just something that it's like there's there's no cool factor to it anymore, I guess. Um, so uh, there's also a tool out there called uh, WL Color Picker, I believe, which is a script a gentleman wrote. It's quite in-depth. It uses uh, some pretty cool stuff. But I decided I wanted to go a little bit easier route. So we are going to use a really cool tool that I love called YAD, and we're going to use a one-liner from the command line, and we are going to create a color picker that allows us to select a section from our screen, and it's going to display the output and the hex color in a actual color picker uh, color palette and yeah so let's go ahead and jump over to my other workspace here and let's check it out so oh that actually switched pretty quick so uh, we're going to use a really cool program called yad um, dt has a video out on this i put a video out a few years back using yad uh, to create a uh, icon for my sys tray for updates. Um, so it has been something I've used before. Um, DT just put his long video out on it. Basically what YAD is, is it's a program used to create stuff like GTK boxes. So it makes it super easy to do that. So if we do YAD and give it the dash dash color flag, you can see we get this really cool color palette. Um, you can change the opacity. If we just change this slider right here, you can see right up here the color, the opacity of that color changes. And then we also have the sliding scale here for the colors. You can select on it where you want it. And that's about that. So if we click OK and we get that, then we get the output of the hex color right there. So the yeah, a really cool tool. So how do we actually use this in a script? Well, if we want to do yeah and give it the dash dash init color, 
it doesn't give us anything. Why? Because we have a missing argument. If we do equals and then in quotes, we do, let's say 008080, that's one of my favorites. We'll hit enter and you can see it opens it up in that nice teal blue of 008080. Uh, we click OK and it spits it back out on the screen here for us. So that's all well and good, but how does doing this actually make a color picker for us since we can't just look at these colors up here and see that, okay, this is blah, 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 blah as a hex code. So how do we actually get that? Well, we're gonna use a couple other tools uh, called Grim and Slurp. And I know that might sound kind of funny, but those are a couple different screenshotting tools that uh, work for Wayland that allow you to grab a region of your desktop from one pixel to uh, however many and lets you pull information on those and we're going to take that information we're going to parse it and we're going to break out this number right here where of the pixel we're on and we're going to uh, have yad display that color so how are we going to do that well super simple let's just run yad and we'll give it the dash dash color flag and we'll do dash dash init dash color is going to equal but instead of giving it an actual color we are going to have it run a process of commands here so we are going to do dollar sign and we're going to put that in parentheses and we're going to call grim and give it the dash g flag for geometry and then we are going to do a dollar sign again and we're going to do slurp again these are great names for these uh, tools <coughs> Sorry about that, just had a little tickle in my throat. So we're gonna give it the dash P flag and then we are going to unquote that. And then we are gonna give it the dash T and we're gonna say PPM for, uh, I believe that's a pixel pick map, picks map. Uh, I believe that is, we'll look at this a little bit more in depth here um, in a second. Um, and then, uh, so once we do that, we are gonna give it the dash, which is for standard output. And we're gonna pipe that into magic which is part of Image Magic, which is a great, great tool on your system. If you don't have it installed in your system, I highly recommend installing it. Image Magic does magic. I mean, it's, it's a really cool. Uh, we're gonna take standard input and we're gonna format. And then we are gonna format that as percent and square bracket pixel. And we're gonna do colon P and then curly braces. We're gonna do zero comma zero and then curly braces, and then we're gonna close that bracket, and we're gonna unquote that, and then we're gonna give it the TXT and standard input, or output, and then we're gonna pipe that into awk, because we only want one of the fields, and we're gonna give it the dash F, the capital F, and then we are gonna do opening and closing, so we're gonna have the field separators be spaces, and then we are going to print dollar sign three, because when you actually run this without the awk, it's gonna print out the RGB, the hex mat, and all different kinds of uh, color formats. We just want the third, which, <clears throat> sorry about that, I'm trying to mute my mic before that happens so I don't gross you guys out. Um, so we're gonna do dollar sign three, so we only want the third uh, field from our uh, output of that. And uh, then we are going to pipe that back into awk, which there's probably a better way to do this, but uh, this is the way I've played around with. And so <laughs> this is what we're gonna do for now. So nr equals two, and we're gonna uncomment, or, uh, unquote that, and then we are gonna close. So anyway, here's what we've got. We've got yad with the dash dash color flag, and then dash dash init color is gonna be this little one liner here. Basically, it's gonna run in Grim and Slurp, and it's gonna pipe that into Image Magic after it pulls the screen region, which is gonna be underneath our cursor, the single pixel underneath our cursor. Uh, it's gonna pipe that into Magic. It's going to format it for us, and it's gonna give us a text of the output. And we're gonna take that output, and we're gonna pipe it into awk, and we're gonna uh, separate it by spaces, and we're gonna take that third, um, the, uh, excuse me, the third, uh, field, man, my brain fried, <laughs> and we're going to pipe that back into awk because what we're going to do is we're going to take that third field. Well, the third field is going to say pixel colon, and then underneath it is going to give us the hex number. Well, we want to get rid of that pixel colon, so which is right over here, I know, but um, we're going to pipe that into awk, and we're going to do the second column, uh, which is going to be, the, uh, or the second row, which is going to be the, not the pixel, but it's going to be the um, hex color. So, we're gonna do all that, and that should open up our YAD color picker 
um, palette and it should be in initialized with whatever color the pixel is that we click on. So let's go ahead and hit enter. So that is going to kind of put a gray tinge over our screen and we can select, let's just select this green here. So if we select that green, you can see right there, we've got it and it's 446254. So that's pretty good. We click okay, let's run it again and hit enter. Uh, let's come over here and we click on that one. That's 141414. That is all correct so far. How can we make this a little better? How about we don't have it? I don't like the fact that it uh, dims the screen. So let's actually adjust that real quick. So we're going to do slurp dash P. Well, in slurp, if we give it the dash B, slurp is the one that actually allows us to select the region of our screen. So that's the one that grays out the screen and gives us the crosshairs to actually select where we want to go. But if we give it the dash B flag, that's for background color. So we're going to change that to um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I think that should be it. So let's, uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be quoted or not. Let's give it a shot here. Let's, let's hit enter. Okay. So yeah, now we've got the crosshairs. You can see right here it's moving, but the screen didn't dim. So you can actually see the correct color. When the screen dimmed, it was hard, kind of hard to tell. Is that the one I was looking for or whatever? But that's that's what we want. So let's go ahead and select that again. And again, it still works. Okay. So now we've got this system that actually sets up what uh, what we want it to do. We want it to pipe into Yad. So here, let me show you what happens if we take Yad out of the equation and we take Awk out of the equation. So let's just start here and let's go ahead and get rid of all this Awk here. And let's close it off here. Um, and then let's just run this. Actually, we can probably just take this and go grim, slurp, blah, 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 yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Let's get rid of that. So this is basically the command I was running before. So it would allow you to select a section and see so it give you image image magic pixel enumeration and it gives you all the different breaks so this is what i actually broke down with that awk command this awk dash f right here this breaks down and splits everything between um, spaces so field separator is a space we want the third one so in this first line if we do one two three that prints pixel and then down here we have one two three gives us the hex so I was getting pixel and then hex. So basically then the awk and r takes that first row completely out of it, which is just the pixel and only prints the second row. So when we do that, and then we run this all as a uh, one-liner command and use that as our init color, then using our YAD program with the color pixel or with the uh, color picker actually allows us to do the init color, take that one that we select under our cursor, display that and open it up as the color palette and have it initialized with that color. So I just thought this was kind of cool because I, like I said, I do like to customize my system a lot. I do like to take the time to uh, make it look nice because I spend a lot of time in there. Um, and so uh, I do this because uh, this is something that I enjoy doing. I spend a lot of time on my computer. I like all my colors and everything to be cohesive. It might seem like a little thing. Um, a lot of people think that it's a waste of time, but for me personally, using my system, I like it to look cohesive. I like it to look clean. I like things to not be a drastic change when I'm looking at one to the other, my eyes are able to adjust easier between stuff. So um, I like it to be that way. So I like to take colors of my desktop uh, wallpaper and I like to integrate it into all my different stuff. So I have custom uh, color schemes for NeoVim, for Emacs, for Vim um, that all kind of match my uh, wallpaper. Um, all my wallpapers kind of match. So that way, if I change a wallpaper, I still have the same colors. And so, yeah, every once in a while, I like to go a little bit... Uh, more out of the ordinary with my wallpaper change it change the color scheme on it so when i do that yes i do i do take the time to sit down and i could use something like you know um pie wall or whatever but that takes a lot of the fun out of it for me i do enjoy every once in a while just sitting down and hey i'm going to change up my system a bit let's go through um, again i don't get too crazy i might switch some colors in my color scheme uh, the basic color scheme structure on my uh, neovim and emacs scheme stays the same i just go through and change the color codes on them um, to kind of match what I am feeling at the moment. And so, you know, I went from more of the teal to um, more green now. I took the green out. I've got more of a gray brown. Um, I just kind of like those cool colors. And being able to actually select a color um, from my desktop easily wasn't so hard in Xorg, but it was a little more difficult in Wayland. So, writing this and being able to do this um, is, is super cool. Um, I actually created. Uh, 
a script with this in it. It's basically just this in a script and I linked that into my user local bin. So if I actually launch, let's do my uh, launch menu here and I run color picker, I can just run it straight from that. I can find what I want. I can click on it and it works. So um, I could set it up as a key binding or whatever, but this is just something cool that I thought uh, I'd like to share with you guys a little bit more back into the bash side of things, the uh, running uh, one liners and scripts and stuff. Hopefully you guys found this interesting and useful. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll be seeing a little more of this because I kind of want to get back into doing some of this stuff. Um, I know a lot of you guys aren't too terribly concerned with bash. Uh, I'm more concerned with uh, window management and, um, you know, what cool programs there are and this and that, but this is kind of my wheelhouse. I do like this stuff. I like doing it. Um, I'm not an expert by any means. I get comments all the time on my videos and stuff. So people saying, you know, why'd you do it that way? Or why didn't you do that? Or this doesn't work or blah, blah, blah. So I'm not an expert by any means. I mean, you want an expert, you got to watch a guy like, uh, you suck at programming. That, guy, <laughs> that guy's awesome. Uh, David Eddy, I believe, um, love watching that guy's channel. Uh, so if he says something and I say something different, always take his word over it. Cause that guy's, uh, that guy's amazing. So um, if you're watching, I don't know why you would be, but if you're watching, uh, I appreciate your channel. So anyway, uh, that being said, uh, that's kind of the video I got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you can get some use out of it. And uh, yeah, we'll be continuing to show my new Wayland setup. Hopefully I get some of the kinks worked out again, if I can figure out how to work uh, global key bindings and scratch pads on uh, Nuri. I will probably add that and have uh, DWL and Nuri. Um, I'm hoping to see how well Waybar, uh, or Waybar, Wayland works uh, with battery life on the laptop. So we'll just kind of check that as we go as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week, man. Stay positive. Uh, there's, there, there's always a reason to be positive, man. You guys, you just got to look for it sometimes. Um, be appreciative. Uh, remember what you got. Uh, don't focus on what you don't have and have a great rest of your week. Stay safe. God bless.